My friends, oh, welcome back. You know me already, and I know many of you. You are my family, my subscribers, my friends. And my heart is happy every single time when I can outreach to you. Now, as you know me already, you know that I'm as well a guy that uh, has emotions like all of us. I'm not guided by emotions, but always when I hear about people that need help, well, uh, I jump into it. I want to help. It doesn't matter that many times when we want to help, instead of getting a return, um, I don't know, <laughs> positive vibes, sometimes to get in return, uh, exactly the opposite. But this is not uh, related to what I'm saying. It's just that uh, we shouldn't uh, help uh, expecting something in return. We should help because we've been called to make a change in this world. We are Christians, brothers and sisters, and we are called to care. We are called to love. We are called to have patience. And we are called uh, many, many other things. But uh, let me mention one more thing. We are called to tell the truth. To tell the truth. Why we have to tell the truth? But there are many reasons. I could make a preaching in which I will speak why we are called to tell the truth. And I think it will last for a while. You will hear me speaking about reasons why we should tell the truth always. But... Um, I'm not going to make now this preaching why we should tell the truth. I'm just going to say that this is a follow-up to the video about Johanna. Yes, you heard it right. This is a follow-up and that video about Johanna and her daughter Isabel. Isabel? Isabella. Some say that her name is Isabel. Isabella. It's beautiful, or Bella. I have a, a beautiful friend, a Filipina. She's a, an awesome girl, an awesome wife. Her name is Bella, and she's beautiful. But now, uh, listen, brothers and sisters, God put beauty in all of us. There's no such a thing as an ugly person. We live in this world that put definitions on people. And it's very, very subjective when you say uh, about beauty. <laughs> Beauty is subjective, but truth is not. Our truth may be, yes, it's subjective. Because we live in this world that uh, defines the truth in many different ways. But when we go to God, uh, when uh, the Lord is opening our mind, heart, and soul, we realize what is the truth. And then uh, we realize that we need to live this life of ours in the truth because the truth is always setting us free the truth is always opening our mind heart and soul and we see clear we see clear friends so i want to speak the truth about johanna and her daughter let's call her for the sake of argument conversation isabel the video that you just seen before was made uh, wanting to help but uh, i heard only one side of the story I heard the story, the side of the mother, the mother that was hurt that she lost her child, the mother that desperately wants to be with her daughter, and it's normal. You tell me, <laughs> I'm not a mother, I'm a father, but I think I can understand what does it mean uh, to miss your child, and you want to be with your child, and yes, and yes, we make mistakes, all of us, we make mistakes, but our mistakes are there to teach us a lesson. What I didn't speak about in the first video was about mistakes. And uh, as uh, I allow my emotional side to kick in, I haven't uh, researched facts from the other perspective as well. I believe completely what I've been told by Johan. Then I discovered with proof, solid proof, that is not really what Johanna said. Johanna is a good mother. I will not say it differently because uh, this is the truth. A mother that loves her daughter, but as much as she tries, as good as she is, and she is a good mother. After all, she decided to bring her in this world. After all, she decided to 
love her and uh, to say she's my daughter and I want uh, to keep this pregnancy. I want to see her coming, uh, to hear her the first sound, <laughs> that first sweet sound that I heard from my kids, you know, and, uh, and finally they embrace this world and they open their eyes and uh, you see them. Ah, that beautiful sound that means a lot to all of us. And what is your first reaction? If you are a parent, you understand what I mean. Your tears. You have tears here. Tears are coming from your eyes because there's a new life coming and embracing this world. Well, life starts from the moment of conception. But when uh, finally the baby is out, then uh, you can see with your eyes. And then there is a different step in uh, our reality. This uh, reality uh, in which we live is not this reality in which babies live. But let's not divide it. The fact that she chose to bring this baby in the world when she could have said, like many women, my body, my choice. They say that, even though it makes no sense because that's not her body. It's uh, a different life that uh, is there, uh, developing, growing. That's not her body. So, Johanna is a good mom. She decided to bring this baby in the world. But Johanna, like many of us, has issues as well. Tell me one person that doesn't have a problem. No? No? Nobody? Yes, exactly. You cannot tell me one person that doesn't have problems. All of us, we have problems. All of us, we have issues. Maybe we're not struggling with alcohol like some. But we struggle maybe with a porn addiction. I don't know. Maybe you're not struggling with drugs, but uh, we smoke. And that's not good as well. We are broken. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need the Lord to come personally in our life, to have that encounter with him and to be changed, to be made new and never again the same. And Johanna has her problems as well, like all of us. I didn't know that, uh, but now I do. I do, as I made some research, I've been uh, helped to see. And I'm not going to put her down, no way. Now, all I was going to say is that uh, as she has problems, she can sort them out by the power of Jesus. When we have a problem and we admit we have a problem, then there is easy way to better ourselves by the power of jesus we come there at the cross and say lord this is who i am and i have this in my life i have this in my life i have this problem i have this addiction i have this bitterness that is in my heart i'm getting angry easy i have no patience with my kids oh you tell you tell to the lord everything oh, don't tell to people people cannot do much for you it's God that can change you. It's God that can give you a new beginning. It's God that can give you a new passion. It's God, my friend. It's God. As you know about God, then you start to love God with passion, with a love that burns you from the inside down, then you will know. Johanna needs this. In the end, all of us, we need this. Tell me. <laughs> Johanna needs this. Swedish um, social services, uh, I owe them an apology. I've been biased. I dealt, not personally, but a common friend, uh, someone from his church, faced uh, social services from Norway, Bevernet. And uh, this social service is based, I'm going to explain what happened, because uh, you guys deserve to know. So you understand why I was uh, emotionally biased. and. I jump into making that video without thinking. Uh, maybe there is another side to the story. This story that what happened in Norway with Bevernet made me biased. So there was this Christian family. One of our brothers, Romanian, married a beautiful Norwegian girl. Now you know. She can Christian as well. And this is amazing in, in North countries and those parts, that part of the world. Christianity is not um, as powerful as uh, in other parts like Western world or I don't know. It, it, Christianity is in decline. So it was exceptional the fact that this girl, a Norwegian, beautiful, a Christian, it was like a treasure. And our Romanian brother said, oh, I want her. And they married a woman that is, has nothing out of um, 
this world, she is a woman that wants to be a mother. She's the woman that wants to be a, a submissive wife. She honors her husband. She loves him to bits. Uh, you tell me, I had a man there to say no to a woman like this. <laughs> I mean, she worth her weight in gold. A Norwegian woman, huh? oh, beautiful blonde hair. Uh, if you're a bit darker, Romanians are not really dark, but they are uh, a bit of a darkish complexion, I should say. Come on, you know how Romanians look like. Eastern Europeans, not as like me. I'm Romanian myself. Okay, I admit. <laughs> I never said it on my channel. But I will say it right now. Me, because I'm so mixed with Russians and I think uh, there was some Serbian blood there and Armenian. Or, so I don't have the same complexion like uh, um, typical Romanian. So he, they married. Let's get to our story. I don't want to give you too many details that are not relevant to the story. So he married to her. Then they had a beautiful family, seven kids. Oh, what now your family is their name? And then what happened after years of happiness and joy, one of the children at school, he said, uh, I don't know what was the circumstances. He said, daddy, sometimes when we are naughty, he smack our bottom. He said that. Now the teacher, she heard. And the teacher, what? This is violence. Smacking the bottom of your child without bruises and all, that's violence. Well, the Norwegian authorities, uh, they self-invited uh, in the house. They've done a very abusive uh, research based on that. There was no violence there, come on, smack in the bottom. And then they concluded that uh, they have to do something. So uh, I don't know what was the, the criteria or how they were thinking. They snatched two kids from them. The kid that said that uh, smack bottom, and uh, an infant, eight months only. So they lost two kids. Now, with, I mean, they were well fed. Uh, everything was fine. There. there was no violence in there. Everybody could confirm neighbors that they, they had good life conditions. They, as I said, there was a Christian home, Christian home. Then uh, Norwegian authorities said religion, their religion of their parents, they are extremists. They are fundamentalist Christians. The Norwegian state called them fundamentalist Christians and they said, then they brought the religion into it and they said uh, they will brainwash and indoctrinate their kids into Christian religion. What is that? I mean, it's my right to educate my kids in, in my own religion. I don't have a religion to pursue. I have a way of life. Christianity is not religion. It's a way of life. It's a relationship with God. That's what Christianity is. And uh, after all this, um, as I said, they snatched the kids. The kids uh, remain in the Norwegian state, but then they poked the wrong bear because as Romanians, <laughs> we fight hard. This family knew a pastor in Chicago with the influence, a Romanian pastor, and this Romanian pastor calls, calls all Christian communities of Romanians all over the world especially Western world. So we started to protest. Then we had uh, good coverage in the media. And then uh, we called the embassies of Norway. We saw to them, this is not right how we are acting. This is fascist the way of dealing with it. Stop doing that. And then Bevernet, the social service, uh, pop up as hideous and ugly as it is. Uh, how many cases of kids that they've been abused uh, under uh, everything under the net umbrella, kids that they lost their life, kids that uh, they've been put in contact with, uh, uh, I don't want to say it, you know, what kind of people. So the many stories of kids that had their life destroyed by Bevernet. Um, monstrous entity Bevernet is, uh, it has nothing to do with uh, children protection is more like they have a plan uh, they have a number to snatch kids every year and they do everything they can to fulfill that plan and Bodnaria family sadly was in, caught into this so after a long time or nearly one year in which we picketed uh, continuously there were protests there were negative coverage in the media it was toxic for the Norwegian authorities absolutely toxic absolutely toxic Romanian uh, Prime Minister at that time, 
names are not relevant. He summoned the Norwegian ambassador and asked him, oh, what is this? So this is a flagrant uh, violation of human rights. Uh, and uh, Bevan has nothing uh, solid against the parents. Uh, it is, now they come with religion as a reason. So after all this, then eventually, eventually they release the children. They didn't like it, that they were totally humiliated, that people were calling Bevernet, calling them fascists and Nazis. Uh, they didn't like it, that the, all the uh, skeletons in the closet of Bevernet, they, they were displayed all over and everybody heard about it. That's how negative the advertising was. But still, the Bevernet was not destroyed. Sadly, this monstrous entity called Bevernet exists today as well. And Bevernet is not about the children protection. No, I'm saying this again. So that's why I was biased. Sorry for the long explanation, but I had to tell to you. Now I find out that actually Swedish authorities, uh, for now, they've done the right thing. Uh, by removing the kid, uh, I hope this is just temporary. It gives uh, to Johanna time to refocus, to get in contact with God, to bring to God all her imperfections, all her minuses again. Johanna is no worse than any other. Um, we all have minuses in our life, so let's not throw stones in anyone. Let's look at ourselves. Remember that episode with the Lord? They brought a woman that she was caught in the scene of adultery. And the Pharisees were happy because they said, that's our gotcha moment. That's our gotcha moment, Jesus. They brought her there. She was caught in the scene, they asked, uh, screaming. I can imagine them gnashing their teeth. She was caught in this scene. What shall we do? The law of Moses said this. What about you, Jesus? What do you say? The Lord looked at them. I can imagine him with a sarcastic smile on his face. And sarcastic and bitter in the same time smile. And then she so just reclined towards the sand and he scribbled something on the sand. And then he turned to them and he looked them in the eyes and said, whoever of you doesn't have any sin, take the stone and throw it. To shape pussycat. After he said this, one by one, they throw the stones and they left because not even one was there that had no sin. The sin here. Yeah. Not gain anything by crucifying your Khan. On the contrary, you can help her. Yes, she she needs help. She first she has to admit that she needs help. I'm not sure if she's yet there, but she can be there. Then uh, after she will realize that she needs help. If there are progresses in her life, and let's pray for those progress, the child can be reunited again with your heart. And then the relationship with her mother. I know there have been uh, episodes there of abuse. Sadly, it's true. Johanna abused her mother. Well, it happens when you are uh, in, a, in a tough spot of your life. I'm not excusing what happened, but I'm, I only say that I understand. There is solid proof that these are the facts. Uh, they're not lies. Johanna claims that these are lies against her. No, they're not lies. They're not lies. There is proof, not just words. I should have looked first before making that previous video. I know. Apologies. Apologies to social services in Sweden. And um, what can I say is that uh, this video clarifies the things. I begged uh, social services in Sweden to, to give her one more chance uh, to have a, a serious discussion with her and tell her, look, please, by all means, change your life, make these adjustments in your life, and then to monitorize her to see if she really changes. And if she does, then her to be reunited with her child. It would be sad for that little, sweet little baby to grow without her mom. But uh, if she's not safe, if she's not well fed, like uh, sadly I've seen reports that she was not well fed, that she, 
she was uh, neglected, that she was scared, that she had a certain phobia of water. That means she was not really body was not proper washed. That's the most logical conclusion. Oh. You see, it's so complicated. This is not easy. But we need to pray. We need to pray for wisdom and for discernment. Yeah. I've been told, uh, uh, please have discernment. Well, I do. I do have discernment. I have logic as well. I'm not an emotional guy. I used to. I used to. You see, sometimes when you... But for this case, yeah. I was biased because of my emotions. Emotions created to bever... Because of the bever incident. Emotions don't help, isn't it? I have to do this video to clarify and to say that, um, again, let's help Johanna to be back with her daughter. And, but let's encourage her to make changes. Let's not bash her. Let's not laugh at her. <sighs> what if will be in that position? Have you been in uh, a certain addiction in your life? Have you been in that position in which you were looked down and mocked by many? Because it's easy to mock, isn't it? But it's very hard to help. If we have the spirit of Christ in us, we want to help. Not to bash, not to look down on others. Because in the end, we all, the Bible says, we all fall short of glory of God. And we all need God's help. We all need God's help. And no one is better than the other. If we realize this, then we will be able to treat each other with care with love and with respect. God bless you all my friends and thank you again for everything. To next video, stay close. Always yours, Peter, Christian blogger, passionate about the truth because the truth is setting us free, isn't it?